today we're going to be working on the XP Pen 24 inch Pro 2K model. I'm very excited to show you guys this particular piece of tech. It's paired with a desktop all in one, a uh, Macintosh. And I'm going to show you the process that I use whenever I create illustrations digitally. This is going to include, and not limited to, the sketch phase, the color phase, and finally the rendering phase. Hopefully, we can get everything blocked in to an hour, and I'm very excited to show you guys. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are. This is Photoshop. I'm sure that there are other programs out there, and actually, I utilize a lot of the other programs that are available on this particular format, the Mac OS. I use ZBrush, I use Sketchbook Pro, I also use Rebel, Painter, and um, Illustrator. Gosh, there are so many programs out there these days, but Photoshop really suits me for its capability, its ease of use, um, uh, and, and the fact that I've been using Photoshop since 1997 really helps. So, how did I set my document up? First, I went in, File, New, and uh, I got image size, and I specified 18 by 24 at 300 DPI. That's a great resolution to start out at. 5,400 pixels by 7,200 pixels, and I went in and specified a value for the background. I don't typically like drawing on white because whenever I go to my color stage, it really is a stark difference between the blackest blacks and the whitest whites. So I put it on a gray background to really help me visualize things as I progress forward. So what am I doing today? First of all, let's look at our brushes. This is the brush menu. And whenever I go in here, I always typically go towards my favorite sketch brush right here. So we're going to go ahead and turn taper on. What's great about Photoshop is the fact that you can customize so many different things in this program and you can cater it to what you are, who you are, what you do. If you're a photographer or whatever you are, Photoshop has the tools for you. It is similar to a multi-tool device. It's like the multi-tool device of the artistic tool belt. So I've got this nice sketch brush right here. I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge this. And I've got my taper on. What's great about Photoshop too is every time you switch one of the tools, if you look up here, the menu, the submenu changes. So if I wanna change a layer transparency, if I wanna change pressure curve, if I wanna change the flow, I can do all of those things up here and it will affect the current brush that I'm on, my favorite sketch brush. So what am I drawing today? Um, I have a myriad of different uh, story concepts that I've been utilizing and doing sketches on for a long time. So if I go through, let's look up Frank and Beans. Okay. Here we go. Frank and Beans. Let's go down. Okay. Frank and beans. Here we go. So, this is my character right here. He's an alligator. This is beans. And what's great about him is the fact that he's got a free spirit and he's an explorer and he does a lot of things that are kind of outside the normalcy box. His uh, counterpart. Here he is again. See, here he is. And his counterpart is Frank. Frank is a very large Russian grizzly bear. So as you see, Beans has got a free spirit. He's uh, from the swamps of Louisiana. And Frank, he's got kind of a solemn. He's had a lot of experience in the world. And he just loves the small things in life. Whereas Beans is really out there and he just loves to have fun. Beans does not like spiders, though. So again, you can see his free spirit. I just love drawing this character. He's so much fun. These are all traditional illustrations, and I have done quite a few digital illustrations of him. But today, we're going to be exploring the whole sketch process. So what is the sketch process? 
The sketch process is that process that I utilize whenever I'm creating a piece of art. So here is your blank canvas. And honestly, this can be really foreboding for a lot of people, especially if you don't really understand how to format things and put things on a page. What's great about this, in hu this huge screen, this 24 inch 2K screen, is I've got a lot of real estate to explore. So I'm not sitting there sketching on a small tablet, you know, either phone sized or something like that. I've got this great piece of real estate I can go in and start having fun. And that's what's great about um, digital illustration is you can go in and you can start blocking things in really quickly, right? And just having a lot of fun doing it, you know? Beans being an alligator, he's got this huge bulbous belly and then it's got this tail that comes down and it wraps around and it comes up. And what I'm doing right now, again, is that rough sketch. I'm just putting things in here temporarily as I work through composition. Composition being where I put things on the page. and trying to figure out exactly what I want Beans to be doing. So Beans, again, is a free spirit. He's an explorer. So I think we might do an explorer, an explorer illustration. I love uh, being outside. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's kind of a dichotomy of who I am as an artist because, you know, being an artist, you have to basically be inside all the time. And it's not, it's not my favorite thing to be inside all the time, but, uh, you know, balancing, having that balancing act between what I do and, and in terms of a career and also balancing with, um, you know, that creative side. So as I scroll through, you see that I'm not using a really small brush with these very fine lines. You know, with this, with this particular tablet, it's got over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's got all these wonderful quick keys that I do utilize whenever I need to. But I've got, you know, so much muscle memory built around my keyboard that even though I've programmed, see, I use that to switch. I've got three monitors in front of me. Even though I utilize um, the quick keys, I don't rely upon them solely. And you can program things uh, in there to really help you out and do things. But I just haven't done that as of today. You know, whenever you work for so long and you try and inject something completely brand new into your workflow, a lot of times the results aren't exactly what you would expect. Being, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, <laughs> and completely change the way that I do my quick keys. Um, you know, this is, is designated as being a professional model tablet, and I think it completely is. You know, you compare it with other items in the marketplace, and it holds up right there uh, exactly um, with the other uh, items out there. You know, your, your bonded screens, your, your 4K models, and this is just, the screen is phenomenal. And just coming at this from a person that's been doing this a long time, you know, the screens, the 4K screens are beautiful, the 2K screens are beautiful. But what is really great about this machine is not only it has a 2K screen, the latency is so tiny. You don't have hardly any, look at that, hardly any latency at all. Latency being the time when you make the stroke and whenever the stroke actually appears. So a lot of that depends, uh, of course, on your computer. And this particular machine is a little bit older, but it's still very, very viable um, for this particular exercise. So what I'm doing now as you see, I'm basically mapping out where things are going. See, I'm going to give him a hat. He's got to have one of those explorer hats, right? Even though he's an alligator. And you see how rudimentary this is. This isn't supposed to be the final sketch. This isn't supposed to be the absolute. It's just supposed to be an exercise and the direction of which 
I'm going. So his arm comes here, and then you have this arm that reaches up. Actually, that's a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and make that smaller. Nice. And see what's going to end up happening is this. So, and I'm going to put you, I have to put you guys on time lapse because of the whole process. I wanted to keep all of these talking moments to about 10 minutes each and the rest is going to be time lapse. So in the sketch phase, what I'll do is I'll map out and I'll get all of my basic shapes in. And you can basically tell he's on some type of rock, right? As this comes up, and maybe we'll have some plants. And then we'll have Okay, and you can see he's standing on a rock and he's got a pickaxe, something that he uses whenever he goes exploring to uncover different types of, uh, you know, maybe treasure or something like that. So let's go ahead and have this down, down just a little bit because his arms aren't that long. So, okay. And this is basically what I, call, what I would call a first pass. So first passes are fun because they're, most of the time, they're not really utilized. They're just there as a, how do I put it? An idea generator, a primer, a moment in time that helps bring you to the next level. And have this right here. He's got a shirt on. It's got like a, you know, he's got his rolled up sleeve. He's got his spines. It's kind of in a three quarter view. So if you notice, um, and this is one of the things I wanted to do before I went to uh, time lapse, is in terms of placement on the page, he's not. Let's do this. Mm -mm. He's not in the center, even though he is the subject. I've got him placed to the left just slightly because I want balance. Balance being, you know, this whole this whole ideal of the rule of thirds. You know, you want your your subject matter in areas to help direct the eye line of the viewer. So I've got this intersection. You want your subject matter on these intersections of these little um, this grid uh, pattern. So I've got him basically on this quadrant right here and on the intersection, intersective lines. So as I go through, what I'll do is I'll start balancing. I'll start like right here. I have this element right here in this quadrant. So then I want something over here in this quadrant, you know, the plants. And maybe even if I go so far as to have a bird right here, you know. Beans has a, has, his best friend is his, is Frank, but there is a bird, and his name is Alexander. So, if you look, already I've got balance. So I've got this large area right here, it comes down, and you have this curve that comes up, and it directs your eye line right to Alexander, and then you, as you come up, you intersect again with Bean's face. And then you have this curve right here, which acts as a framing element. So all of this acts as a framing element in the context of the illustration. That, instead of just doing a character, I want to tell a story. That's important whenever you do illustration work and concept design and character design for games. Telling that story is extremely important. You might not have all the things that you need. Let's get, make this a stick. Might not have everything that you need in terms of drawing capability, but what's great about whenever you have a really strong story is the style and the, and the way that you do things can be, I don't want to say overlooked because you always want to have really good art, but story is key. Story is the absolute key 
to a successful illustration. So I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on time lapse. We're going to watch the process evolve. And then I'm going to bring you back as I wrap up the final sketch. And then I'll talk a little bit about how the next stage, which will be color block in and putting in local color, which will be color without shade or shadow. And then finally, in the end, we'll come back uh, after I do some time lapse in the color. And then we'll come back in the rendering process and I'll show you how I put in shadow and light and some textures and show you the final wrap up and, uh, you know, just the whole process of illustration. It's so much fun. So let's get you on time lapse. Okay, so this is my, <laughs> how do I put it? It's a very messy, loose sketch. So as you see, I'm slowly progressing towards getting a composition and a fine line that I'm comfortable with and, you know, utilizing all the tools that Photoshop has to offer from cut and paste the move tool to the warp tool, all of those are definitely at your disposal um, in this digital environment. You know, using these these wonderful um, these wonderful digital tablets. Now, what you see me do just then was I went ahead and put my initial sketch on a transparency layer, and I adjusted the opacity down to about thirty five percent to where I can go back and use that initial sketch as a base layer for me to reference as I progress through my thoughts uh, involving this illustration. So you'll see me change a few things, change a few helmets, you know, I'll change some other elements here and there, eye positioning, mouth positioning, mouth length, and all those things really are part and partial to the illustration process. You know, my first idea uh, initially was my my first sketch but as we all know and a lot of times my first idea isn't the best so as i progress forward and i progress through i'm using all the tools like i said that photoshop uh, and the tablet offer for me to go ahead and get a composition that works for me you know changing the expression all of that stuff definitely um, is something that i can do uh, as i go forward um, I haven't quite made it to the final line yet. I'm still working out some of those details. And, you know, this illustration took a little while. And that's definitely something that you have to remember. Even though these digital tools work incredibly well, you always have to remember that it does take time. You know, sitting down at the desk, sitting at your, at your computer, and, and just hammering out these illustrations, hammering out these ideas. You know, it does take time. Um... So, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and give you guys some tunes that you can listen to as I progress through. And if I see something that uh, I need to make some comments on, I'll pop right back in. So enjoy the process.
Okay, so this is where I start putting in sort of my final line. Even though, you know, at this particular point in time, I was like, yeah, I'll just put in another line and then I'll go over it again. I realized that, you know, my time, I don't have, you have to adjust, you know, and, and how much you want to really show. And that's me getting reference for my character. Um, and how much you really want to show, because at the end of the day, the line is there, but it doesn't have to be perfect. That's another thing. Finish, not perfect. That's a statement that I really adhere to in my illustration career, even though it's, it's important for you to have perfection according to your standards. But the reality is, is a lot of times, a lot of that gets overlooked or, you know, it, it doesn't really, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it does. But you kind of have to gauge how much effort and how much quality, not quality, how much um, time you put on a specific piece because you want to be able to finish it. I can't tell you how many times, you know, in my career I've seen so many different pieces that were never finished because the artist couldn't balance perfection with time and, you know, the understanding that, you know, time is important. You know, it's time spent, it's time earned, it's, you know, it, it's time away from your family, it's time sitting at the desk, it's time, it's just time. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll make it, I'll, it'll still be kind of loosey-goosey, which will be, again, towards the whole look of the piece. You know, I don't want it to be super polished. I want it to have some character to it. A lot of times that polish will destroy the look. There's, the, there's a terminology called overdone, right? It's overdone. You know, we already, already always think that's acting. You're overacting or you're over singing, and that that happens too. But you can look at a piece and definitely say that it's overdone. Um, I used to have an art director that said, you know, because I, I would really put a lot into the piece. He goes, "Man, you really put some love in here, didn't you?" Yeah. And then whenever that's another thing, you put your heart and soul into a piece, and then somebody doesn't like it, and then you're destroyed. That's why you have to balance and. And, and make that time work for you. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. We're in the we're in the halfway mark here. So just keep watching and and, and hopefully you'll enjoy the music.
Okay, so I wanted to stop really quick just to explain what stage I'm at. So if you remember, we started out with this rough sketch. I've changed a couple things. Instead of him holding a pickaxe, now he has a torch and he's in sort of a cave slash swamp environment. And of course, he is uh, exploring. Let's go ahead and boost up the opacity on this. You can see my initial sketch, and I went ahead and did a final sketch. So you can see I've tightened things up quite a bit. I've got some variation of line weight, and just overall tightened things up a little bit more neat and tidy. And I added um, this element right here, which I'm going to go ahead and push that back a little bit. You can see, the further I push it back, it pushes him forward, it brings him forward. And ultimately, if you saw in the time lapse, what I've done is now, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse him a little bit. You can see what's going on. So, he's exploring, and he doesn't even realize that there is um, a nefarious creature behind him. And I've put a little bit of a lighting element back there too. And I've blurred it to push it back, and whenever I start blocking in the color on him, which is what this is going to be right here, let's go ahead and get rid of the highlights, get rid of that. You can see I'm already starting to put in some of these darker elements uh, here and there to really pull this entire front panel, this plate right here. I call it a plate because I'm thinking in terms of multi-planes because I have a background back there, and then I have a mid-ground right about here, which I'll put some other elements in. And you can see I've already tried, I've already started to do that with some of these reeds that uh, are separating him from the monster, the creature in the back. And then now I'm going to go ahead and just start blocking in the color. Um, I'm, I'm utilizing a really muted color palette. Nothing really pops just yet, just because I want to go in and put everything, uh, uh, you know, in that dark hue. And, you know, you'll see here in just a moment, I'll block in the colors and, and I'll come back um, to uh, that base color line or, or that color palette. And I'll start pushing and pulling those values to really coincide with this torch, which is going to be the highest uh, highlight uh, in the entire piece. So I could even go so far as to do this first. All right, I'll go ahead and put in, let's go ahead and make that really bright. Let's give it a little bit more orange. Okay. And as it comes around and around, and then of course in the center, it's gonna be much brighter right here and as it goes out it's going to be red in some of these areas right here and I might even go so far I do have a fire brush and I might put that over everything but that's whenever I get into the lighting stage so go ahead and give you an understanding of what's going on here and then I'll make this maybe an overlay uh, let's go ahead hard light. And again, I haven't quite gotten to this this uh, this stage yet. I'm still blocking in that color. So I'm going to put you guys back on time lapse and you can watch me block in this local color. Local color being the color of an item without any light or shadow on it. And I'm utilizing a very soft shader brush, which has a taper on it. So I'll come in, and I don't need to be really exacting, to be honest with you, because this I'm going to have this uh, more of a painterly feel. And as I go in, you'll see, it'll be really loose, especially around this area, this area, because, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on the items and the elements that make the most sense for the illustration. I don't want to sit here and really render these reads when all of the action is right here. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And as I come in here, I'll even get darker because these elements are, are in the foreground. You know, all 
this stuff. Maybe I have some reeds coming up here and whatnot. So let's put you guys back on the tunnels. I love this element so much. I just want to keep looking at it, but I can't because it's interfering with the illustration in the foreground. So let's go ahead and get you guys, guys back on time lapse.
And here's where we're currently at. So I went ahead and blocked in the color and I put in some simple shadows um, with a little bit of texture. So <clears throat> here's my color layer right here. And I've got other color layers uh, subsequent uh, to that color layer. Um, and you can see positioning of those layers to again, give that sense of depth. And now what I'm going to do, I've just put in some simple shadows. I went ahead and did a uh, clipping mask over my color layer uh, on my character here. And I've adjusted to multiply. And now I can adjust as needed for the opacity. And let me see here. Let's go down. You can see it's pretty loose, but on the other hand, it does have quite a few areas of, uh, of some sharpness and, and just overall I'm trying to get, and you see like what I've done here as I've pointed these branches, you can see I pointed them to the character and what exactly is going on. So it leads you, the entire illustration is leading you up to right here. This is the focus of the piece. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just start putting in some uh, highlights here and there. Let's see, where do I want to begin? I like that. I started rendering in the fire a little bit. You can see here. I can start just putting in a little bit of fire. Again, I don't want to overdo it. You know, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I don't want to overdo the illustration. I don't want to overdo the piece. You know, fire is one of those things that you can get in there and really just make a muck of it. And I don't want to do that. Again, what's really cool about having this tablet and digital illustration is you're like, oh, I'm sitting here working. Oh, oh my gosh. You know, in the real world, that would be a game changer. That would be, okay, how am I going to figure that out? I need to paint over it. Do I need to erase it? How can I work that into the composition? But in the digital environment, using this great tablet, I can go in and just control Z and move on. See, that's what's really cool about digital illustration. Very random because fire is quite chaotic, but it is very beautiful. If you ever watch fire near a campfire, you can definitely relate. Okay, let's have a couple little items kind of falling down here and there. Yes, and we got some coming up. Okay, so now, gosh, it's such a complex illustration. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't anticipate on it being this complex, but you know, that's the way art is. Sometimes you get into a sketch and you realize, gosh, I really want to put more into it, you know? So let's go ahead and create another layer mask and I'm still working on my core character here. So I'm going to choose a highlight color. I like this highlight right here. So I just took my eyedropper, I eyedroppered it. And since this is on a clipping mask, it's only going to affect the color, but it's on a layer and I'm going to go ahead and put it to overlay. And as you see, it gives a real nice, brilliant highlight. So what I can do is I can go in and I can just start putting that highlight in. very quickly. I can start putting in some of these, a little bit of a highlight on the bag. And as light is dissipated, because here in just a moment, I'm going to put in what's called an atmospheric. And an atmospheric 
is like fog or particulate matter or dirt or swamp gas or something along those lines. So even that helps out a lot. Go ahead and put a little bit of highlight on him. Going really fast, keeping everything really loose because it gives that lively feel to it. And you do get some reflected light, so like back here, I'm going to get some of that light even on these right here. I'm going to get a little bit of light play. Okay. Nice. Let's go ahead and do this. And that eye shine right there. Yep. There. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put in just a few atmospherics, but I, before I put you on the final time lapse, I want to put you on the final time lapse because, you know, even though I am working really fast, I want to make sure and give you guys the best illustration I can in the time allotted, and that unfortunately will take. A little bit of time lapse to wrap up some of the little logistic items like reflected light. So reflected light, let's go ahead and do, uh, I'll give you an example of reflected light. So as you see, you have all these highlights back here that are cooler. This is a warm highlight. We're going to contrast with some cool. So I'm going to go ahead and add a third clipping mask on top of my color layer. I'm going to choose a cool, uh, cool mold. Purpley, no, we're going to go blue, kind of bluish green, right around there. And then, as you see, I'm just going to part, start putting in a little bit of that cooler reflective light. Maybe something you know, down below is reflecting. You see even that. See, then we're going to put it down here because it contrasts that reflected light. It contrasts that warm hue and it gives it just it reaffirms just a little bit more that form that we're trying to accomplish see just a little bit more here and there here a little bit there a little bit too much and even if i do put a little bit too much i can just go back and erase it or I can adjust the opacity. A little bit of reflected light over here. And a little bit on him. Over here. This is actually one of those illustrations that I could work on for hours and hours, tidying up, putting in texture, putting in lighting effects, putting in all those little details. But one of the things that I always tell, because I teach uh, at the collegiate level, one of the things I always tell students is, first of all, you know, that phrase, time is money, time is money. Yes, it is. Time is always money. But time is also an investment. You know, time has a return. You have to make sure that you get return on your investment. And, you know, these digital tablets, you know, that are out in the marketplace, XP Pen being one of them, of course, really helps maximize your time because it's you know with this huge space and with all of the programs that are out there you can really just go in and 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 do incredible illustrations uh, in a very short period of time okay so now what i'm going to do is i'll be putting you guys on time lapse but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to have a bluish green hue and I'm going to put it, let's see, I want to put it, where I want to put it.
let's put it behind there. So let's do this. This is what is known as an atmospheric. So I'm going to go ahead and anytime you put some type of an opaque light color on top of other color, it basically will kill the color. So even though this isn't white, this is a blue hue. So we're going to go and layer back. Let's go all the way back. Because I want to go in back of this right here. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go in back of that. I've already put some back there. We're going to put a little bit more here. Okay. And as you see, your first, the first, uh, you know, take on the illustration, it's like, oh, there's an alligator and he's got a buddy. And then as you start looking, you can see there's a creature in the background. Sinister. Okay, so now even though I do have, you can see some of these lines right here. I can go ahead and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and it eliminates that really quickly in short order. So let's go back up. Okay. Let's go Filter, Gaussian Blur. Boom. It gets rid of it. Blends it in. So now I'm going to go on top of everything. I'm going to pull my purple hue, and I'm going to just start pushing and pulling some of those values um, as I progress forward. So let's put you on a final time lapse, and we'll do a final wrap up, a real quick wrap up in the end. And this is kind of the final wrap up. What I'm doing right now is I'm going back and with my blur tool and I'm just blurring some of the elements that I want to push um, in terms of, you know, focus. I flattened everything into one layer, as you see. Actually, what happened there? It moved. No. Just hold on just a second here. Okay, we're fine. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Let's go back. Is I'm blurring. So you see, like on the certain edges that I don't want to really pop out. I've already blurred this hand pretty well. Just some of the stuff that is a little bit further in the distance. I don't really care for it to be popping through. So, like the bottom, like that plant right there. That right there, maybe that edge. And again, it helps establish form, form being height, width, and depth. You know, I, I teach, like I'd said before, and I always say one of the biggest hurdles that artists have is understanding the concept of form. Even though, it's so funny, and I explain this to him, even though, you know, we live in a three-dimensional world, whenever you start involving drawing, or not involving drawing, whenever you start to try to draw, you're, you're looking at something three-dimensionally, and then you're trying to make it, and you're putting it on a two-dimensional surface, trying to make it look 3D. That's a hard concept to wrap your head around. And then, if you, <clears throat> if you inject some type of software, or if you inject you know, some type of uh, medium that you don't quite understand, 
you know, watercolor or something like that, then suddenly it becomes very frustrating. So that's what I'm basically doing is trying to establish a little bit more form here by blurring things, especially on him. You know, he's got some details that are really nice, but then some details just, you know, I don't, I don't really want you to care to see, right? All right. I think that's pretty good for now. That's where I wanted to land for you guys for this particular tutorial. This one was so much fun. This character I love. You know, I don't call it work whenever I do something that I love. And art and doing something that you really love is something that can really change your life. And with these digital tools these days, man, you know, the sky's the limit. So, that being said, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.